Allow me to take several minutes to explore and discover all of the different pedal options you have for your Nord keyboard. Let me walk through each one of these pedals and a little bit about what it does and how these pedals are similar, how they're different, how you might want to use one over the other. Also keep in mind that depending on the Nord keyboard you have, you might not even be compatible with selected pedals here. And I'll try to paint those pictures as well as we move along on this discovery detailed video all about pedals. As we go through this video, one important aspect to take note of. I'm not including any talk about MIDI pedals or MIDI controller devices via a pedal or even the Nord Pedal Keys 27. We're just talking about pedals that go directly into a dedicated pedal jack in the back of your keyboard, exclusive of what we consider a MIDI controller or a pedal that can manipulate MIDI on your Nord keyboard. So we start here with the Yamaha FC5 and you might say to yourself, that doesn't even look like a pedal that I'm familiar with. It's a very small, low profile pedal and if you are a Yamaha fan and been using Yamaha products, you'll come to quickly understand that this design, which is in my mind award winning, it has been around in the Yamaha family for decades. They have included a pedal just like this in their earlier electric keyboards and electric pianos. I mean, and it's so awesome because it's tiny. It's got a wide place to put your foot, super light, very affordable. This is only $15 US, give or take, and it holds well to the ground. And I include it here for two reasons. One, to prove to you that it doesn't have to be a Nord pedal in order to be compatible with a Nord keyboard, at least as far as sustain pedals go and foot switches. So that's why one reason I include the Yamaha. The second reason I include the Yamaha is to show you that not all pedals that work in a sustain capacity or in a foot switch capacity have to look like a traditional piano pedal that we are accustomed to. If you're a piano player, this is what we know and love. But this is equally capable as a sustain pedal. And it also works as a foot switch, just like these over here, which we'll learn about in a minute. The end of the Yamaha like many of the sustain pedals here, it has a tip and a sleeve. Tip and sleeve with one separator in between. Using this, uh, whether it has one separator or two, is another guide for you as you're working with pedals to kind of figure out what you're doing and how they work. So this is a tip sleeve. That's the Yamaha. In a similar way, we have a non-Nord branded pedal. This is from M Gear. It's a traditional sustain pedal and it works just as well for your Nord keyboard. You know, each one of these has a little bit of a different personality trait. They have different weights, different sizes. You can see the M gear is quite a bit longer than the original Nord pedal. You might not be able to see that on the angle here, but it's at least, I'd say it's over an inch longer. It's a touch taller. It's certainly wider. So, and it's got a bigger footprint. There's just more surface area for you to stomp uh, versus the original Nord pedal. But I include these here just to show you, you don't have to necessarily buy Nord branded stuff. Many of you already have one of these, and that's because a lot of the Nord keyboards come with a sustain pedal. Not all of them, but certainly the stage keyboards traditionally have come with a version one of the sustain pedal. And now let me pause for a second and tell you what they have in common. First of all, they can all be used in the sustain jack and every single Nord keyboard ever made, or at least ever made in the last 20 years, has the capability of, in, of having a sustain pedal option. So you can, whether it be the Nord Grand, the Nord Piano family, the Electro family, the Wave family, as well as the Stage family, they all have the capability of having at least one sustain pedal for use on that. Even if it doesn't have a piano engine, you can still have a sustain pedal connected. In addition to that, and a little known fact, you can use your sustain pedals as a foot switch. On some Nord keyboards, the foot switch will manipulate the organ rotor speed, toggling between slow and fast. In other Nord keyboards, you can use your pedal to move up a program or down a program in a single direction. So these can double as a single switch foot switch. In addition, they all have something in common, which is the ability to push on and off. It's sort of like a light switch. It's either on or off. It knows there's a down action. It knows there's an up action and it's on and off. 
different than some of these other pedals, which we'll talk about, which are continuous sensors where they go from zero through 100 and everything in between is uh, sensed when you push the pedal. Now would be a good time to talk about the Nord Sustain Pedal version 2. Look how much bigger this is than the other guy, the original. It's wider, it's definitely taller, the pedal itself is, is bigger, and it's heavier too, by, you know, about 50% heavier. This pedal is interesting because it can be used both as a sustain pedal and as a continuous controller pedal. So when the Nord Sustain pedal version 2 is connected to the sustain port in the back of your Nord Stage 4, it acts like a regular sustain pedal, just like you'd expect, but it also supports half dampening and pedal noise. Alternatively, when it's connected to the control pedal jack in the back of your Nord Stage 4, it acts like a traditional control pedal or an expression pedal. You can only use this pedal as of this recording with a Nord Stage 4 or above or newer. This will not work, and I repeat, it will not work with your Nord Stage 3 or anything before it. So if you're planning on getting this Nord version 2 pedal and plugging it into a Wave 2 and expecting to get sustain out of it, you will be disappointed. That will not work. But for the Stage 4, it works like a charm. Now, in that same direction, I'm going to show you what the bottom of this one looks like. Notice how this sustain pedal is tip ring sleeve with two separators. So you can already tell, ah, this has more functionality than the original Nord pedal. Besides that, you have zero through 100. So as you're pushing down the pedal, it understands your velocity and it understands there's incremental stages here in between as you push this pedal up and down. Now on a Nord Stage 4, this pedal can be used for all sorts of things. Uh, too many to even describe here in this one video. I'm going to be creating separate videos for the Nord Stage 4 course that will outline every aspect, every piece of functionality on the Nord keyboard and which pedal to use and how it works with a complete demonstration along with the system settings that you want to use. So that's the Nord Sustain Pedal version 2. Moving to the right here, we have two different types of pedals from Boss. Boss is owned by Roland Corporation, and these are foot switches, and they are two switches on the same unit. You have here the dual foot switch FS7 and the dual foot switch FS6. If you want to learn more about these and see these in action on a Nord Stage 3, I have a video on each one because there's just so many things to it. It requires its own video, each. So you can learn about the ins and outs of these pedals. I'll just quickly summarize that they are traditionally used for going up and down a program, up and down like this. So on a Stage 3, they can be connected to the program up, down. And for the Stage 4, they can be connected uh, to something similar. On the Stage 4, that jack is simply called the foot switch. So these pedals have a lot of similar functionality. It's just that their footprint, no pun intended, is different. Here you have in one direction a foot that can go up or down without actually moving left or right. Some people prefer this because it's more compact and it can actually work without a battery, or it can work somewhat without a battery. Then here, this one, other people prefer because um, these pedals are easier to identify, A and B, and for large feet and for people who feel they're not as adept with their footwork, they prefer this pedal because it's easier to guarantee that they're pushing up or down based on left and right. So that's really up to you and the kind of human you are. Uh, but those are both from Boss, and they're really good quality foot switches that have been in the industry for decades. Next, we have uh, a one-of-a-kind thing here. This is called the Nord Half Moon Switch, and it's meant to toggle the speed of a rotary speaker from the Leslie emulation on those Nord keyboards that have an organ engine. This is mounted on any Nord keyboard that has drawbars. If, if your Nord keyboard has physical drawbars, not the digital drawbars, but if it has the physical drawbars, then you should be able to mount this half moon switch and connect it to the rotor pedal in the back of the keyboard. And this has three switches, slow, stop, which is technically a switch onto itself, and fast. So three switches there, that's the Nord half moon switch. 
Next, we come to the triple pedals. There are two versions made by Nord. Yes, there are other non-Nord triple pedals made in the marketplace, but I have seen uh, less than adequate results when using them. I would not necessarily recommend a generic triple pedal. As expensive as these are and as tempting as it is to buy one of those uh, off brands, I wouldn't do it. Not because they're bad quality, it's just because their functionality doesn't line up. So when it comes to triple pedals, I only stick with the Nord triple pedals. And this is version one. Surprisingly, these almost do identical things. Uh, and, and they have the exact same functionality when it comes to plugging these in on a Nord Stage 4. On the back of these triple pedals, you'll see a tip ring sleeve, so additional functionality. You have three pedals. You have these two pedals on the left are single on-off, so they can be used as a foot switch, at least on the Nord Stage 4 they can. And then on this side, you have the sustain pedal, which is 0 through 100. Same with this, on-off, on-off, 0 through 100. Same functionality. And the Stage 4 is compatible with either of these pedals, whereas the Nord triple pedal second version has a unique one-of-a-kind type pin configuration. This is a six-pin DIN, which goes on a dedicated port in the back of your Nord Stage 4. So the advantage of getting a Nord triple pedal 2 for your Nord Stage 4 is that because it has its dedicated port, you're not taking up an existing port on the sustain pedal port. So you could technically have a Nord Triple Pedal 2, and if you had an existing Nord Triple Pedal 1, you can use both of them for your Stage 4, and now you have six pedals sort of at your disposal, which can be configured in a number of ways to give you all kinds of options. Of course, that's a lot of pedals to deal with under the keyboard, but if you have a lot going on, then having these pedals might come in really handy and you have all kinds of options to do there. So that's the triple pedal two, triple pedal one. Finally, we come to this pedal, and this pedal can have several different names. It can be called an expression pedal. It can be called a volume pedal. It can be called a control pedal. And it can be called a swell pedal. Those are four names essentially for the same type of pedal. With one caveat, be careful to call this a volume pedal. I try to avoid calling it a volume pedal because there are other traditional volume pedals that are actually volume pedals where you, it's taking sound input, audio input, and adjusting the volume of whatever's coming in and then adjusting the volume out. So it's an in and out situation. This requires you to connect to a jack on the back of your keyboard that is dedicated for an expression pedal or a swell pedal like we have for the Nord keyboards. So in most cases, you'll be using it to adjust volume, but not necessarily. You could adjust it to a morph any number of things if your Nord keyboard has the capability of morphing things. So this is the Yamaha FC7, foot controller number seven. And again, a battle-tested, war-torn, amazing piece of equipment that will last through the ages. I have two of these, and um, I swear by those Yamaha FC7 pedals. Again, descriptions down below. Let's review each of the keyboards and some of their options with pedals. First, we have the Nord Grand with options for the volume pedal, which is also known as the expression pedal or the control pedal we've been talking about. That will connect here to the volume pedal and adjust the volume on the Nord Grand. Next to it, we have the sustain pedal. For the Nord Piano 5, we have that same jack for the volume pedal, but it's volume slash control pedal, but it's the same pedal that goes into this jack. Next to that, we have the standard sustain pedal. For the Electro 6, we have new options. We have a rotor pedal, which will use a traditional single pole foot switch. Then we have the sustain pedal. Then we have a control pedal, which will use the expression pedal we've been talking about. The control pedal in the case of an Electro 6 can control either the volume or selected effects. The Nord Lead A1 has options for a control pedal and a sustain pedal. With the Lead A1, you can morph various controls and assign that to the control pedal. The Nord Wave 2 is very similar to the Nord Lead A1 in terms of its options. It has a control pedal as well as a sustain pedal. The Nord Stage 3 has quite a few more options. We have a program up and down pedal, which will be using a dual foot switch. 
We have the rotor pedal, which will be using a single option foot switch, the organ swell jack, which will use an expression or control pedal, the control pedal jack, it's a dedicated jack for another control pedal. You could actually have two connected here. In the case of a Nord Stage 3, the control pedal can be assigned to various morph destinations. It also has a sustain pedal. If you get a Nord triple pedal version 1, you'll be connecting it here to the sustain pedal. Then we have the Nord Stage 4. We have a dedicated port for foot switch, which is the same as this pedal up and down pedal. The reason for the name change is because this port now can do a lot more than just assign programs up and down. It can be assigned to do various things. Like the Stage 3, we have a rotor pedal, which is a single option foot switch. As mentioned earlier, we have a dedicated port for the triple pedal, a standard sustain pedal, an organ swell pedal, just like in the Nord Stage 3, and a dedicated control pedal. So here on the Stage 4, you could have two control pedals. You could have a triple pedal version 2, a triple pedal version 1, or a regular sustain pedal here. So lots of pedal options for the Nord Stage 4. But there you have it. If you ever wanted to compare pedal options and outputs, this one screen is a good thing to pause on and reflect if you find yourself in comparison mode with all these Nord keyboards. All right, so how you use these and when you use them and the exact configurations can vary. It would literally take several videos to go through all the options on every Nord keyboard. So I won't be doing that, but I do go through all the options on each keyboard, each in their own course. On My Keys to Music, if you want to take a master class with me, we go through all the pedal options and demonstrate how these pedals work and when you might use one piece of functionality over the other. Thanks for joining me on this video. You now at least have seen an overview of the landscape of all the different pedal options you have for your Nord keyboard. Thanks for joining me. We'll catch you on the next one.